So let's start at the top. Uh, the fish rots from the head, as they say. Uh, Howard Schultz is the CEO of Starbucks. Uh, he has been tapped in to, uh, to really address this. Let's replay this clip that we had in the cold open, uh, where mm -hmm. he talks about, uh, he point, paints uh, these unionization as if it's some sort of violence against, uh, well, the boss class. And I guess we'll find out. Now, here's where it gets a little sensitive, because I've been coached a little bit. But I do want to talk about something pretty serious. That's interesting to me that like I've been coached a little bit. Like who's coaching yeah. you? Can we uh, can we see like how much are you paying them to coach you? Uh, can that uh, be like uh, kicked down the line to the people that are working for you um, as opposed to like teaching you how to talk delicately about, you know, how you can screw your workers a little bit more? Um, uh, that didn't work quite so well, but uh, here's a little bit more of this. We can't ignore what is happening in the country well, you certainly as it can. relates to companies throughout the country being assaulted in many ways by the threat of unionization. And that, when he, when he says that thing about like companies across the country, it is like, we're all in this together, capitalists. Like mm -hmm. we all need to get together and it's, this isn't about competing against each other now, it's competing against workers. You know, and it, it is funny how much uh, that rhetoric goes from the very small business all the way to the top, right? Uh, many people who, you know, work in smaller firms or smaller, you know, organizations have all heard this speech before. We're not a company, we're a family. And, uh, you know, we need to all be looking out for each other. And what they mean by that is they want to continue to be the bosses and to be able to dictate to you everything about your mm -hmm. life, about the time that you're spending on the job. Um, and they're very, very threatened by the idea of people realizing that there is a vast difference uh, between them and the people who sit at the top of these companies and the top of these organizations. Um, I mean, it is beautiful when they speak clearly like that, I must say. Now, uh, lest you think that Howard Schultz, you know, the CEO of a company like Starbucks, got to be the most comp one of the most competent men in the entire world. Like, devoting his full energies to this. He's got something in his back pocket, guys. And uh, you're not going to believe what it is. I mean, you might believe what it is if you think this is all some sort of simulation where like every dumb thing that we cover on this gets like pulled back into the main storyline in the season finale. Um, but anyway, uh, here is here is the, the, the magic thing that we're going to offer instead of get, letting our uh, workers collectively bargain. Okay, let me give you another tidbit. I shouldn't say this, but what the? Uh, okay, uh, I'm not a digital native, obviously. <laughs> Raise your hand if you're a digital native. Foreign language, man. That's not a very strong hand. <laughs> Who's a digital native? It's no like one. One guy putting his hand. <laughs> Adam Brodman's a digital native. Okay. How many people have followed what is... It's like Dave Rubin stand-up. <laughs> Anybody gay here? <laughs> followed what has been happening with NFTs. <laughs> wow. And uh, maybe I'm imagining that, but I hear borderline groans from yeah, the crowd. <laughs> I do. <too. laughs> no one... Adam Brodman's a digital native. Okay. How many people have followed what has been happening with NFTs? Wow. How many people have participated in investing in NFTs? How have you done? Okay, for now. Okay. <laughs> So if you look Bring at, endorsement. I try to be a student with all this, not being a digital native. If you look at the companies, the brands, the celebrities, the influencers that are trying to create a digital NFT platform and business, I can't find one of them that has the treasure trove of assets that Starbucks has from collectibles to the entire heritage of the company. 
What the hell does he mean by that? <laughs> what collectibles? I mean, they have those collectible mugs. I mean, no, I mean, like, I, I don't even want to rationalize what he's saying because it's it's so ridiculous right now that he's forcing people to come into these kind of captive audience meetings. You know, as people are saying, hey, we're tired of, you know, not being paid fairly. We're tired of being abused to the point of, you know, breaking down and crying um, on the shop floor. Uh, we're tired of having these people control our lives completely and having very little to no say in it. Um, mm -hmm. And all Howard Schultz can come back to them with is saying, hey, look, me and my friends in the boardroom have come up with a new idea for how we can try to make some money off of this highly speculative industry. It's amazing. And the whole thing about like the digital native, like I'm trying to understand this because I'm a did not a digital native. It's like, it's bullshit. Like that, that nobody, like that's everybody's like thing is, but like, and the way you phrase it, like, how many of you have invested in this and in NFTs? Like it's, it's just embarrassing from a guy that like, who knows what it is to move lots of money around in the yeah. real like like markets <laughs> that NFT markets, which is just a embarrassing simulation that is loaded up with like a bunch of laundered money. <laughs> um, like, I mean, just unbelievable. Uh, we'll finish out his little spiel here. But yeah, th this is what he's going to offer instead of uh, letting his workers collectively bargain. That has the treasure trove of assets that Starbucks has from collectibles to the entire heritage of the company. So, here's the secret. Sometime before the end of this calendar year, we are going to be in the NFT business. Okay? Uh, I mean, there's, I mean, there's just nothing to... Nothing there. We're going to talk um, a little bit more more materially about what's going on with the company and 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 the power that they do have. But I must say, you know, people should remember that they brought Howard Schultz out of retirement uh, to basically try to quell uh, this historic, truly um, unionization push across the country uh, with Starbucks uh, Starbucks workers. And it really is amazing just how out of touch this guy um, is. You know that they called in the big dog, and the big dog is coming in to say like. We're going to start selling some uh, highly speculative bullshit <laughs> assets to some people online again. Yeah. You know, maybe if there was some like level of profit sharing um, or something like that, that was like included in that, uh, you know, in that announcement, it would be something to be excited about. But again, you know, remember the dynamics there. If you are a wage worker, you aren't getting a buy in into the bottom line um, of, of this company, which is why uh, people are fighting right now. Um, you know, to be uh, to be to be in a union so that they can get uh, more of that money and profit that Amazon, uh, sorry, that Starbucks um, claws away from all of those workers on a daily basis. It just is. If anything, like if I were on the fence in some other kind of universe watching that, uh, uh, you know, that speech, I would ha I would walk away saying like, we need a we we need a <laughs> union and we need it like yesterday. <laughs> I mean, NFTs uh, on. <laughs> I, I, I'm honestly excited to see what that's going to actually yeah. mean. Like how, how is that possibly going to be like, I, I honestly, like in a way that affects the regular workers lives, I, I, I if, I'm really at a loss for what it could possibly mean. Yeah. No, I mean, your guess is as good as mine. Should we get into some of this stuff, though? We got to break down uh, this story as much as I wish we could just be dunking on Schultz for his, his insane, uh, you know, new pitch to people. Um, yep. You know, th this this fight is is really heating up and there is success in a lot of threats that that we're seeing. Um, I wanted to note just up top because um, under, understandably, a lot of the focus has been about how many new stores are, are popping up. And as we've said, every time we've covered this story at this point, um, there probably is. Um, a, a unionizing Starbucks in your area, it's very worth it to get involved. And we'll talk about why that matters um, a little bit uh, later. Um, but one of the underlying parts of the story that I've been wanting to remind people of is that Starbucks has fielded an incredible amount of money to try to quell uh, this unionization effort. Again, it's one of those things where um, you know, the company is so fearful of a, of a union forming uh, that they're willing to basically spend, you know, absurd amounts of money. Um, but it is always telling that, you know, if they just were to voluntarily recognize these unions, uh, there wouldn't need to be a line item on the Starbucks budget 
uh, for millions of dollars to hire really, really nasty anti-union uh, law firms, right? right. Um, you know, the money is there to take care of people. And that is why, you know, people are joining unions and demanding that. Uh, but it just shows like on a nuts and bolts reason. This is not a company that is sort of strapped for cash. Um, I wanted to note that despite the fact uh, that Starbucks has hired some of the nastiest players um, in um, in the legal world to sort of quell this union, they have not been having tremendous amounts of success in the courts. Um, and I think earlier this week, Starbucks actually h- fired um, a couple of the leading lawyers, uh, these big anti-union lawyers, because they've been losing um, in court. And I don't want to sit here and defend the job of, of these of these kind of scumbags here. Um, but I do think that it probably has a lot more to do with just how untenable and ridiculous the position that Starbucks has been taking against the unions and the very, very clear episodes of harassment and targeting of union organizers probably is having a much larger effect um, in, in why they're u- losing all of these cases um, across the country than the fact that you got the wrong guy. Yeah. Um, a, a couple other things just uh, off the top too, you know, there has been Howard Schultz announced to a lot of fanfare um, that they're going to halt their stock buyback uh, program in the immediate future. Um, and they're going to start investing more in team members and in actual um, stores. Remember, uh, I, I talked about this yesterday during the Griscom stream that, you know, the financialization of corporate America has had a really, really nasty knockdown effects. Uh, for workers, because if you are a company like Starbucks, instead of trying to find ways to make workers' lives easier, to invest um, in the people that you've hired, to invest in the storefronts that you own, um, if you're using all of the you know, the majority of the capital that you're getting um, to basically try to artificially inflate uh, the stock price, um, you know, you're taking money out of the hands and pockets of, of everyday workers in the company. And some people saw this announcement and said like, oh, no, well, maybe this is going to slow down um, the effort. And I would just remind folks that this is a very, very clear example of how unionization gets the goods, right? Even just the threat is making the company change its behavior. Right. And if I'm somebody working at Starbucks, if I'm somebody organizing in Starbucks, point to this um, and, and say like, look, this is what they're giving us now. Imagine what will, will happen when we get more and more people um, signed on, when we get more and more of our unions uh, recognized. But should we go to this letter here? Because, you know, Schultz is not a very, very skilled orator, um, and he very clearly doesn't get the the everyday life of the people working for him. But he did something that I find very, very sickening. Um, And it's something that, again, these CEOs try to do where they play on their own personal life story um, to try to quell people expressing their democratic right to be in a union. Um, He tells a story. He sent out a letter um, to Starbucks employees where he breaks down, um, you know, how difficult it was for his dad. You know, his dad was a blue collar guy. Uh, Howard Schultz always likes to say that he lived in public housing when he was younger. Um, And he basically makes this argument um, saying that my dad would have loved to have had all of the things uh, that we give to Starbucks employees. And it's very sad uh, right now that there's this big threat of bringing in a third party, which, again, remember, the union is the workers. It's not a third party. We can just bring this up full screen real quick. Uh, This is a, a segment from his letter. Um, No partner has ever needed to have a representative seek to obtain things we all have as partners at Starbucks. And I am saddened and concerned to hear anyone thinks that it is needed now. This is somebody who is completely out of touch with the everyday experience of all of all of his workers. If you look at any of the kind of media that has been put out by the organizers of this campaign, there is plenty um, that Starbucks workers are not getting. There's plenty of support that they're not getting, and there's tremendous amounts of threats that they are experiencing, um, you know, pursuing, again, their basic democratic right to be recognized uh, by a union. I just find that kind of rhetoric to be absolutely disgusting. And I do want to remind folks, too, you know, that Howard Schultz was very likely to be Hillary Clinton's pick uh, to be the labor secretary. Of, of the United States, which would have been a very, very frightening uh, reality uh, for all of us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I warned you or, or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, should we should we go to Phoenix real quick? Um, because I, this is a negative and this is a negative story that has a, a positive um, has had some kind of positive reactions to it, I, I must say. But I want to talk about uh, Lila Dalton, um, who was is an organizer 
uh, with the Starbucks union in Phoenix, Arizona. You know, this is a young person um, who has been targeted by the company for union organizing. This is somebody who has, you've probably seen these videos circulating on, on Twitter uh, because she's recorded interactions uh, that she's had with management, you know, where they were attacking her for being sick or for having a family member die, um, you know, and, and trying to get time off of work. This is somebody who has been working at Starbucks for a very long time, who works overtime, stays late, all to keep this company's business afloat. And now the company is targeting her um, and has now fired her um, from the company very clearly. No ifs, ands, buts about it uh, for union organizing, which is, a le- which is illegal. And they're going to try to spin it any which way, uh, but do not let their, their feet get off of the fire here. On March 15th, the NLRB um, has a, a, uh, issued an official complaint against Starbucks, um, alleging that district and store managers in Phoenix were spying on workers and were threatening workers who were supporting unionization. Um, and they also note uh, that one of these Starbucks workers was suspended. Um, sorry, they, they suspended one worker and fired another. And th- there might be more updates uh, to that. I don't know if the person who was suspended was fired um, as well off the top of my head. Um, but, you know, this is this is a very, very clear example of Starbucks breaking the law. Um, and we should also be advocating and pushing people in the Biden administration to use all the tools at their disposal uh, to be coming at them. Um, but I wanted to, to go to, to Layla Dalton um, and, and sort of recognize some of her words, because this is somebody who's not going to give up, um, which has been just so inspiring. Uh, this is an interview that she Layla Dalton did uh, with Alex Press and Jacobin, uh, which came out on, on the 21st of March. Um, this is what she said about what she's learned so far from organizing for a union. I want people to learn what a union is and know that they have support if they want one. Many people have to live paycheck to paycheck. I'm fortunate right now because I live with my parents, but $15 an hour is not enough. It is not. People are basically slaves to their job and they can't even take care of their family because they have to work 24-7. Unionizing is the only way for people to be able to support their families and themselves. So I truly want the whole world to be educated on unions uh, because I wasn't. And she's been doing a hell of a great job of of continuing that fight. Um, There is a GoFundMe um, in the show notes on on our YouTube uh, for ways that you can donate uh, to her as she has been fired from her job for union organizing. Um, But I want to to, to flip um, to one of the most incredible parts of this story, which is that Starbucks cares a lot about their reputation. Now, remember when they first started getting big, they were like, oh, we're fair trade, you know, we're green, all this kind of stuff. They want to be seen as a progressive company um, in the U.S., and we should use that uh, to our advantage. Um, And one of the things that has been so inspiring about the Starbucks campaign is one, the fearlessness of the organizers and the people on the ground, but also the community support um, has been amazing. Matt, this is a the other video. If the reinstate um, Layla video, if we could ha- p- pull that oh, up yeah, okay. uh, real quick, because in Phoenix, after um, Layla was fired, there has been a tremendous groundswell of community support, making sure that people in the community know uh, that Starbucks is abusing their workers and refusing, um, you know, to allow something like this go away you know, and just sort of, you know, pass along in the news cycle. So after she is fired, this is a rally here at the Phoenix location uh, where she was fired for union organizing. And just look at this tremendous amount of community support. This is incredible, and this is not a, a unique thing. Across the country, people have been showing up at these facilities when they've abused workers. Remember, they fire people in Memphis. They fire people in Buffalo. Starbucks thinks that they can get away with this because people won't be paying attention. Um, and, and this is a really, really important time you know, to be showing up and to not allow them to get away with this. So far, while they have the ability right now to fire people, right, because it's the dictatorship of the bosses, community power and workers power can overturn that and overrun it. Um, And I think it's really important, you know, to make sure you're finding ways uh, to get involved. And I just wanted to go to one uh, last message 
um, from Layla, uh, which I think really embodies the kind of spirit of solidarity and, and, and organizing, uh, you know, that should be an inspiration to, to all of us here. Um, today's the union vote, right? Yes. The union vote. How are you feeling about the vote today? I... I am, I'm ready for the vote. I think, if anything, my firing has made people even more outraged and it's going to cause us to really dominate this election. Do you have any words for your um, co-workers as the uh, union election begins? I just, I tell them to stick through it and to not let management do, they want them to all quit because they think I'm the glue that he holds this whole thing down, but I'm not. We're all so strong, and I'm just telling my coworkers I will be back, and that I appreciate every little thing they've done for me. I wouldn't be here without them and all you guys. Well, yeah, they could try to kill a few roses, but they can't stop the coming of spring. I mean, you know, that's I that mean, embodied right there in front of you. Exactly. That's just an unbelievable, like, uh, like as a leader as she is, that that's like a graduated level of leadership is when you can like understand like when you are less important and actually the the whole is what is the important thing. I mean, that was incredible. Yeah. So solidarity with those people in Phoenix and all around the country. And again, remember that more <laughs> likely than not, uh, there is a, a facility in your area that you can find ways to support them and, you know, do what they're asking too. I always remind people, um, you know, there, there are ways to sort of, you know, show up and follow calls to actions and not just to, you know, <laughs> um, act on your own accord, right? This is really important to, uh, to have some discipline. Um, but absolutely beautiful, beautiful story. And, uh, I'm, I'm really excited to see much more of it. I mean, every day there's another, there's another store that is announcing that there's going to be a vote there. And, uh, I don't think that's going to stop anytime soon. <laughs>